symbolic of English life and character. This traditional scene is, in a sense, the world's most unusual editorial conference. The famous punch table to which only the most distinguished literary figures and humorists are invited. Attendance at this weekly lunch is an honor, which makes this apparent exhibition of bad manners by Bill Hewison even more disturbing. But in fact, the carving of one's initials, normally done in a quieter moment, is part of the tradition of the table. The more defaced it becomes over the years, the greater its value. Just a few of the famous names chosen at random are the American humorist James Thurber, our own great novelist William Makepeace Thackeray, the inimitable John Leach, and one of only three guests ever to be so honored, Prince Philip. Only the following week's political cartoon is discussed at the lunch. The editor, Bernard Hollowood, and art editor, Hewison, both brilliant cartoonists themselves, plan the rest of the magazine in a more conventional manner. The range of subjects these days is wide, although the magazine has always had serious undercurrents. These 19th century forecasts of television, for example, and air-to-air -air refueling have an almost science fiction quality. Aspiring cartoonists will be interested to know that even the most famous artists might have to alter or redesign an idea he has perhaps worked on for weeks. In this case, he is Russell Brockbank, himself a former art editor. After retaining basically the same cover for over a hundred years, the cover now changes weekly, giving every type of artist, from these delightfully conventional styles to the modernistic school, an equal chance to make us laugh. Finally, for writers everywhere, this is the mystery man who returns so many cherished manuscripts with that famous rejection slip. This is one of the few English magazines with a wide distribution overseas, which does not need to print in other languages. Not only because its humor is international, but because its character today reflects life as it is, in every mood, but always in the best traditions of English literature.